Hello, and welcome to St. Anne's. I'm Robin Sewell, and I enjoy sharing my love of the art and history of this wonderful church. If I were in charge of doing the decoration of this church, I would choose the pictures that inspired me the most. And so for J.E.H. MacDonald, who had traveled all over Canada and had painted the Canadian landscape and the clouds and the water and even boats, this picture that we're going to look at today seems tailor-made to inspire him. It is the Tempest, and it is based on a passage from St. Matthew where we have the wind and the water and the boat. But as we look up at the painting itself, the first thing you notice is that it is not in J.E.H. MacDonald's personal style. He has sublimated it. This picture is not about the artist. It is meant to express the divinity of Christ. And so, even though it has all the elements, the wind and the water and the boat and the disciples, what dominates is the figure of Christ. And that's where some of the confusion comes in, because there are two passages in Matthew that contain all of these elements. Now, the first one is a story of when Christ was healing the sick, and he had spent all day doing this, and he was so tired that he, he even says, is there no place where a son of man can lay his head? And so he and his disciples get into a boat, and Jesus immediately falls asleep. But then a huge storm comes up, and the waves and the wind is such that the apostles are terrified for their lives, and they wake him up, and uh, they, they say, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he says, oh, men of little faith, you know, don't be afraid. And then he calms the water and the wind, and they are astonished. And they say, what kind of man is this who can control the elements? Now, in the second one, Jesus uh, has just finished the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. And he sends the apostles out in the boat. And he says, you go on ahead without me, because he wants to go up, to a up on a mountain and pray. And later that night, as the disciples are in the boat, battling the wind, it says, uh, by the fourth watch, which is 3 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the morning, they see Jesus walking across the water towards them. And this time, they're afraid because they think it's got to be a ghost. And that's where Peter bravely steps up and says, Lord, if it's really you, ask me to come to you. And he tries to step out onto the water. And he goes a little ways, and he's doing it, and then... He's frightened by the wind all around him, and he begins to sink. And he stretches out his hand and says, Lord, save me. And, of course, Jesus does reach out his hand. And again, he uses the same phrase, O oh, man of little faith. And he manages to step in the boat with Peter, and the storm is all calm. But this time, the apostles say, Truly, this is the Son of God. Now, when we look up at this painting, we ask ourselves, which one is it? And I think there's clearly a case to be made for the first one, because we look around and we see lightning in the sky. That's evidence of a storm. I mean, sure, it's windy in both stories, and we see the mast with the sail whipping around, but that lightning gives us a clue to the first one. And then you look in the corner, the bottom left-hand corner, and we see an apostle with his hand stretched up. And it could be Peter saying, Lord, save me. But it could also be Peter or another apostle saying, save us before we perish. And where does Jesus' hand go? Not towards the apostle. It is raised in command to still the storm. And so... Clearly, this painting called The Tempest, to me, represents the stilling of the storm. But what's really interesting about it 
And what ties it into the second is that this is a painting that expresses the divinity of Christ. And so in this moment, MacDonald has painted Christ not in the way he's described in the first instance, but in the second one, that with his portrayal, he shows us that truly this was the Son of God. And when we look at it, like Peter, we can have no doubt. I hope you'll join me again in the future as we look at other art from this hidden gem at St. Anne's on Gladstone Avenue in Toronto. <laughs>